Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. Back with some more vibes for all you. Yes, I. And uh, we're going to Europe. And this one is called Geography No Slovakia. Someone says, hey, my brethren, could you uh, check this one out for, uh, for me and let's see what you think of this one. So we're going to Slovakia. Ooh. Excuse me. But anyway. Should I edit that out? No, it's a human thing, you know, people burp. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to Slovakia. As I always say, man, I hope you guys are doing great out there. Nothing is getting on your nerves. You're relaxing, chilling, simmering down like we see upon the island and thing. But, you know, I ain't going to babble at you for too much longer. Let's go ahead and YouTube and sim simmer. Hey, everybody. We are back to geography now. Good to see you again. So this episode, Slovakia. All right, for the 18th time on this channel, in the Slavic world, you have the Eastern Slavs. No. Don't just sit, come, sit, come no. on, man. The Balkan Slavs. No. And then you have the Central Slavs. Come play with us, Poland. Day okay. And within Central Slavs, you have Slovakia, the youngest sibling, who's like, Hey, guys, guys, hey, guys, I, I have an automotive industry. Come on, you like cars? What about mountains? You like skiing? Yeah, Slovakia. It's like the Jan of Europe, if any you guys know that reference. By the way, guys, this is Terry. He's going to be in the Solomon Islands episode. He's just uh, here for the moment, so yeah. Say hi, Terry. Hi. Anyway, cue the new intro! It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. Slovakia, not Slovenia. That's the next episode. They're sick and tired of being confused with each other. They literally even have a monthly meetup between embassies to exchange mistakenly addressed mail. To make things even more confusing, they're both Slavic countries. Their flags are similar. They both had a history of dramatic communism years. And even their names and languages have the same prefix of Sloven. Nonetheless, Slovakia. Before we start, just want to introduce someone who will be helping me throughout this episode. One of Slovakia's top YouTubers, PPP. Hey guys, thanks for having me, Barbs. Huge fan of the show. I was born and raised in Slovakia. I lived there for 18 years, so I hope I can be of some help. Thanks, Peter Man. And hee hua. Let's look at the globe, shall we? Cue new transitions. Ah, <sighs> Slovakia. We just kind of slipped out of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and peacefully exited Czechoslovakia. We kind of do that. We slip out of places. Yeah, you guys are kind of slippery. Also, if you look at the shape of the country, it kind of looks like an elephant head with a really fat trunk. In any case, here's the globe. First of all, Slovakia is landlocked, located in the region of Central Europe, bordering five other countries. So central that some claim that the village of Kremnitske Bane is the geographic center of Europe. But like a ton of other countries claim that too, so good luck. Anyway, the country is divided into eight Kraje or regions, each of which is named after the principal city that lies in it, and each has a unique flag. From there, the capital city, Bratislava, which has gone by many names in the past, lies in the far west, in its own kraj. It is the only country capital on earth to have its general metropolitan area border two countries, Austria and Hungary. Bratislava is not only oh, the wow. largest city, but also home to the largest and busiest airport, M. R. Stefanik Airport, and Košice, the second largest city, of course, has the second busiest airport, Košice International. As a landlocked country, Slovakia's water transport is almost entirely exclusive to the various river systems found in their country. The largest and busiest port, of course, no shocker, being Bratislava port, located right on the Danube. However, keep in mind, this small plot of land on the other side of the river in Petržalka belongs to Slovakia and not Austria, careening south to the... That's, that's crazy, and our whole country is just landlock. There, there's no... seafront. For me, that's kind of a... It's just weird coming from an, an island, you know what I mean? Because you wake up and you see the island... You see the ocean. You wake up and you smell the ocean. You know, which which is something that that, that I noticed different when I came to America, and uh, I went oh, to a landlock area. There's a river next by. I couldn't smell the ocean. It's years later. I had a friend go back home and she and she came back, went went to home, as a tourist. She was from here and came back and said, "You could just smell the ocean." I was like, "That's what's missing." I don't smell the ocean anymore. 
Hungarian border. From there, only two other international ports exist in Komarno and Sturovo, both on the border with Hungary. Slovakia has a very extensive state-owned rail network called the ZSR, reaching nearly every major town and region. From there, the border is pretty simple, mostly lining up on natural boundaries like rivers or mountains with the occasional anomaly like Velke Slemense, a town inhabited mostly by Hungarians, split between Slovakia and Ukraine, making it a dual-split minority ethnic enclave. Fun fact, Slovakia has five tri-points with their neighbors, and you can find tri-point posts for every single one, even if the border is across the river. Whew, that was quite a bit. Wait, Peter, you're from Bratislava, right? Yeah, Bratislava is kind of a weird place, man. They have a UFO restaurant on their bridge and a UFO sculpture. I guess we like UFOs a lot. Oh, and see <laughs> if you can find a sewer worker statue, a car cableway, and if you look carefully, see how many hidden war bunkers you can find. The weirdness doesn't stop in Bratislava. In other parts of Slovakia, you can find things like Cage of Shame in Levoča, where annoying people would be put if they're gossips too much. A hotel that looks like this, and they even have a train. I think we need one of that right here in this town. <laughs> you just put a nice big cage up down the street there, because I live like in the city city of this little town. Uh, you put that, yeah, you know what I mean? And some of the people I know stick a bit in there. Shame on you, you gossip. <laughs> that goes through a football field for some reason. I was there for the second episode of my YouTube travel series from Slovakia that shows the most intriguing places of our little big country. Wow, that's like the worst place to put a train track. I know. Why would they do that? I don't know. Slovakia. Well, speaking of notable spots, what are some of the cool sights to see, Peter? Let's see. You have the Stara Bistrica astronomical clock, the Khmarovsky viaduct, Levoča Cathedral with the tallest wooden altar in the world, painted village of Chichmani, and the Warhol Museum of Modern Art, the Klaštorisko ruins, Piešťany Spa, and the most notable sites would have to be one of the many, many historical wooden churches. Or the over 200 castles and 400 chateaus found in the country, which depending on your definition of a castle, makes Slovakia one of the countries with the highest number of castles per capita in the world. Well, no, wow. no, Slovakia, listen here, Wales has more castles per capita than you do, so we take that title okay thank you yeah put it up there ah uh, thank you random welsh correspondent duncan follow him on instagram at curly good life and he hua thank you peter now slovakia doesn't just have a bunch of notable buildings and monuments they also have some sweet nature which Ooh. brings us to <laughs> Yeah, let's let's have it. So there's kind of an ongoing joke in Slovakia. It kind of goes like this. On tonight's news, tragedy struck as local authorities discovered a mountain climber who was found dead near the top of Vinitsa Peak. Just, just say it. We already just, know. Come on, man. Come just, on. Identified as Mr. Jakub Novak from Prague. Yeah. <laughs> That's a a Czech, Czech dude. dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, come yeah, on. It's, it's, so, it's, it's terrible. terrible. It's it's terrible. terrible. Yeah, they love their Czech brothers, but Czechia isn't exactly known for being the most mountain-savvy country on earth. <gasps> Which brings us to the motion graphic. Being over 80% mountainous, Slovakia sits on the northern part of what is now the larger chain of mountains known as the Carpathians that swing into a hook all the way to Romania. Within the Slovakia section, there are subsections of mini ranges like the Little Carpathians, the Slovak Central Mountains, the Ore Mountains, the Maple, the Little and Great Fatras, and the Low and High Tatras, the latter of which you can find the tallest peak, Gerlachowski Stit. From these mountains flow many of the mighty rivers, such as the longest one, the Va River, at about 403 kilometers long. Of of course, the Danube River is probably considered the most important as it passes through Pratislava and many other important towns along the Hungarian border. Along the Danube is one of only two major flat areas, the Danubian lowlands and hills. This is where the highest concentration of people live in the country and where about half of the agriculture is produced. From there, the only other main uninterrupted the flat, flat area would be the Eastern Slovak Flat by the tri-point with Hungary and Ukraine. Slovakia doesn't really have many large lakes or inland bodies of water, the largest one probably being the Lake Orava Reservoir fed by the Orava River. In fact, in fact, the creation of this reservoir inundated several villages, including the famous Slanica, birthplace of this famous guy who standardized the Slovak language. So yeah, kinda sucks for his legacy. In any case, finally, within Slovakia, you can find over 6,000 known caves, like the longest one, the Cave of Liberty, one of the only few rare Argonite caves in the world. It is also a UNESCO heritage site. And to this day, caves are still being discovered and charted. They love their caves. So yeah, long story short, Slovakia is definitely a mountain country. Hiking is one of their favorite pastimes. And within the these mountains, you can find
find over 1,300 mineral springs. In fact, Slovakia claims to have more public mineral springs per capita than any other country. And they have the second largest reserves of fresh drinking water in Europe after Austria. And hot springs! They have them too! Most famous one being in Pieszczany, which was a favorite spot for Romans. Oh, and we have this unique meadow with thousands of ground squirrels where you can feed them and play with them. Yeah, a lot of strange places in Slovakia. Thank you, Peter. All right, and now is usually a time when Noah comes in, but he's visiting family on the holidays. So how about this? For a Slavic country, why don't we have our favorite resident Slav? It's time for Ivan. Come on in, fill in for Noah. All right. Woohoo! Now, as you can kind of see, Slovakia is huge on nature, but within this nature, there's a lot of resources and industry going on too. Today, Slovakia is one of the only few places on earth where opal can be mined. And prior to the 20th century, when Australia had an opal boom, Slovakia was the only place in the world where opal was mined. During the second half of the 20th century, when they were part of Czechoslovakia, Slovakia became heavily industrialized as they were seen as less of a geographic military threat. Thanks to that move, about 30% of their overall GDP is in industry today. The largest and fastest provider being the automotive industry. Today, Slovakia is the largest car manufacturer per capita in the world. After joining the EU in 2004 wow. and having an easier system of business, companies from Volkswagen, Jaguar, Land Rover, and Kia have opened up manufacturing plants, which, of course, Slovakia was totally down for. I mean, who wouldn't be? In fact, their impressive emerging economic output was so impressive during the early 2000s, they were nicknamed the Tatra Tiger. Wow. And speaking of tigers, here's Gary Harlow to give you a little rundown on the animal situation going on in Slovakia. Oi, it's me. As a nature haven, Slovakia has a lot going on, especially in one of the nine national parks, most of which are located in the central mountainous parts of the country. Here, a plethora of diverse alpine and coniferous forest region species can be found like the most common mammals, European bears, foxes, wildcats, and minks. Hunting is completely prohibited within the parks and some species are protected nationwide. There's over 300 bird species like loons, egrets, and storks flying around, probably dropping off babies, as do 17 species of amphibians, the pool frog, the marsh frog, the edible frog, named that way because it's commonly eaten. The edible frog is also a kleptoc, which means it reproduces asexually, essentially laying cloned eggs of itself. That's super weird. So remember, Slovakia here, home of the cloning frogs that you can eat. And that's all for me. Thanks, Gary. Well, speaking of edible, it's time we end off this segment as we always do. Food! Two yeah. Ones, potatoes and dairy. Specifically sheep dairy. Slovaks love these two things. I mean, they love it. They have everything from potato pancakes, both thick and thin, potato dumplings, and even their national dish is a bunch of potato lumps with sheep cheese and bacon. How does that make you feel, Ivan, as a serve? I definitely would eat it. Cousins, long lost. Ciao, brate. They even have this massive fried cheese thing. Sauerkraut and sausage soup soup, garlic soup, and of course the national drink Borovica and Tatra tea, which is a liquor made from tea. Oh, and speaking of drinking, don't forget the Kapurkova. You have to drink the last shot offered to you before you leave a house. It's considered disrespectful if you don't. In fact, uh, we Slovaks have a long history of drinking. Even some of our high-ranking politicians that were recorded drunk in public, Jan Super who literally crashed his car. Oh yeah, and we eat carp on Christmas, but it's like uh, terrible. It has too many bones and has a muddy flavor. People even end up in the hospital for swallowing bones, but we still do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Peter. No taking. Speaking you know, of traditions and customs, but, 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 ready to... we don't bone the fish there. We catch them, we cook them, we bone them as we eat them. You know what I mean? I, I didn't eat boneless fish until I came to this country, you know, and have everything. Oh, wait a minute. Everything is done for me. What kind of vibe is that? I want to peel my bones out and be careful when I'm eating. <laughs> I, I've gotten fish bones stuck in my throat before. Not a very uh, pleasant thing. We're going to move on to the next segment. The... Thank you, Yvonne. Peter, how would you describe what it means to be a Slovak? We are a very patriotic nation. It also means being kind of left out of everything and also being very passionate about everything you like, but also about everything you hate that has to be said. Lastly, 
being religious for most of the time and loving strong alcohol. I like that. Thanks, Peter. Oh, by the way, this is a Slovak axe. One of you guys sent it to me for Fan Friday. Forgot who it was, but thank you. In any case, here is the demographics graph. First of all, Slovakia has a population of about 5.5 million people and has a near net zero migration rate. The country is, of course, primarily made up of ethnic Slovaks at somewhere around 82%. The second largest group would be Hungarians living mostly along the southern part of the country at about 8.3%. I mean, at one point in history, much of Slovakia was actually called Upper Hungary. From there, you have the Romani or Roma estimated at about 2 You know, it's like... They have that big population there, and I'm assuming that, that that's happening because of the border. So I could see a few hundred years from now somebody going, you know, that's ours from 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 that country. That's ours. We won't take it. Boom, conflict. I'm hoping not, but things could just start simple like that. Percent, and the rest are groups mostly Slavic in origin, like Czechs, Ukrainians, and Rusins, not Russians, Rusins. Keep in mind, there is a difference, as well as a few non Europeans. They use the euro as their currency, they use the type C and E plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. The official language is, of course, Slovak, which, by the way, has the longest alphabet in Europe with 46 letters. Long story short, it's basically the same language as Czech. There's like a few small minor differences. Peter, explain. <sighs> This is a tough one to explain. Czech is the only Slavic language Slovaks can perfectly understand. We're used to Czech language in media, movies, etc. since birth, so we kind of learn it subconsciously. Czechs can understand Slovak perfectly too, but they are definitely worse at speaking Slovak, as they're not used to Slovak things as much as we're used to Czech things. For example, a blueberry is Chuchorietka in Slovak, but Borówka in Czech. Stork is Bocian in Slovak, but Chap in Czech. While Turtle is Korytnaczka in Slovak, but Želva in Czech. Completely different words. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> anyway. All right, so faith-wise, unlike their Czech brothers, most Slovaks do, to whatever degree of devotion, at least nominally identify with being part of a religion or church. About two-thirds claim Catholicism, 4% Greek Byzantine Catholicism. Yeah, that's a thing. Protestants make up about 10%, and the Rusin community is mostly Orthodox, which, going off of that, I think might be a good opportunity to briefly talk about the Rusin people, or sometimes called Ruthenian or Carpatho-Ruthenians. Even though they only make up about 1% of the population, Slovakia has the highest population of Rusins out of any other country in Europe. They are a stateless people group spread mostly across Poland, Slovakia, and Ukraine. They have their own unique language, architecture, traditions, and even flag. If you ever find yourself in Slovakia and have time, check out a Rusin village. It's a refreshing experience, I guess. You'll I'd be like to see that. Cultured and enlightened. <laughs> what is my life becoming? Cool people in Slovakia. And one thing all the people love is sports. And with that, here's art with the sports part. Whoa, nice to see you. It's been a really long time since we've shot geography now. <laughs> Slovakia. Okay, so with this country, there's one sport they absolutely go crazy for, ice hockey. Every Slovak you meet will at some point gloat about the 2002 World Championship that they won against Russia. It was a real huge deal for them. Of course, figure skating has always been a favorite pastime as well. These two guys won like a lot of awards, and I can't pronounce their names at all. Try to pronounce them, Art. How would you pronounce that? Andrej Nepala. Andrej's nipples. Andrej's nipples. <laughs> Andre's nipple. After that, like most countries, soccer or football is the second favorite sport in every man, Slovak will football. tell you about the time that they beat Italy football. in 2010. Finally, they've received 36 medals in the Olympics up to the last one in 2016, not including the times that they were competing under Czechoslovakia or the Austro... <laughs> <laughs> or the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It sucks that the Olympics were canceled in 2020. Am I right? And for some reason, the only event that they excel at the most is canoeing. Yeah, they have like eight gold medals in canoeing for some reason. Slovakia really rose my boat. No, wait, it's blown my boat. <laughs> Thank you, Art. Yes, Slovaks will surprise you just when you think you got them figured out. Easter comes around and they celebrate like this. Ow! Yeah, no joke. And with that, I guess it would probably be appropriate to jump into the Random Hannah culture segment. Here's Random Hannah! 
<laughs> yeah, that tradition, it's supposed to symbolize a woman blossoming into beauty. Okay. Oh, and speaking of beauty, very quickly, guess what? I'm wearing a shirt with my own face on it, which you can also purchase at geographynow.com. Now into the episode. <laughs> anyway, as an industry powerhouse, it's no surprise that Slovaks have quite a few inventions under their belt. This guy had about 20 patents, including one of the first wireless telegraph machines. And this guy supposedly was the real inventor of the modern helicopter. During weddings and special events and festivals, you might spot the traditional folk costume for men and women, known as Kroy. The styles vary by region, but... You, you know, when, when they call stuff like that costume, it's traditional wear, not costume. You know, that's like calling the Native Americans what they were a costume. It's not a costume. It's what's indigenous to their culture. Like if I wear a dashiki, somebody's going to call it a costume. They wear it on Halloween and stuff like that. It's not a costume. It's, their tr it's the, what they wear. You know what I mean? And I know they, you wouldn't see that walking around in the big cities. You wouldn't see them like that. But you'll see, I'm assuming you'll see remnants of it. You know what I mean? In, in, in areas where there's not a lot of people going. Like in Africa, you'll still see people wearing traditional garments and stuff in certain areas that is real rural so it's not a costume it's what people wear in some places i don't know if in their case they do wear that and walk the streets in rural areas i don't know i would like to research that usually include white shirts and blouses with patterned multicolored aprons, vests, and head coverings. Slovaks have a deep history of folklore and storytelling, one of the most famous legendary heroes being Jurash Janšić. Did I say it right? Good enough. Who is basically the Slovak version of Robin Hood. Today they have made one movie that received an Oscar in 1966 for the best foreign language film, The Shop on Main Street, depicted a story in World War II. Keep in mind, this was when they were under Czechoslovakia, but but the movie was made with a complete Slovak cast and filmed in Slovakia. And finally, we cannot forget the contributions to the visual arts. The most common pottery you will find is likely the Modra style of ceramic, usually white and blue with elaborate floral patterns. Otherwise, since independence in 93, Slovakia has dabbled more and more into the modern contemporary movement. It's not uncommon to find galleries with pieces depicting distorted scenes and still lifes done with aggressive brushstrokes and a hint of surrealism. And speaking of surreal, here's Keith with his music segment, By My Shirt. Alright, so you all know the drill here. Look at this. You can wear literally this face on your body. At geographynow.com. Make sure my hair looks good. So, Slovakia. First off, the old stuff. In Slovakia, bone pipes dating back to my phone going off. Oh, jeez. Ooh, wanna make a meaningful connection? <laughs> In Slovakia, bone pipes dating back to the early Bronze Age were discovered near the Nitra region and Celts were ruling the area. Today during festivals, Slovakia style bagpipes and jaw harps are commonly played. However, one instrument every Slovak will proudly boast about, the fujar. It's like a super tall wooden bassoon looking thing, very wow. unique to the country and often considered a national symbol. From the 1800s, Slovak music came more Austro-Hungarian influenced. Composers like this dude became a prominent figure in the romantic genre during this time. Today, the music culture in Slovakia has evolved through many layers of influences from every period of their history and fuses them together. This lady, Marika Gambitova, has like more albums than any other Slovak artist. Today, they have some of the most renowned festivals in Europe, like Bratislava Music Festival uh, and Piski, any uh, Pieskeni festivals, and one of the most well known in Poda festivals. <laughs> Dating back to the 50s. You were just gonna leave that. Finally gotta add some metal. Slovakia definitely holds their ground in the metal culture. Here are some really great bands I have found through my findings. List right here. Uh, also, big shout out to our fellow geography peep, Andre from Romania. He sent me this shirt. Uh, I think his band's called Iena. Either way, go check them out. They're cool. Thank you, Keith. All right, and with that, let's quickly summarize the history of Slovakia. There's a lot of stuff. It goes back to the early Bronze and Iron Age. Lots of different people peoples and tribes took over, like the Celts. Lots of invasions, even the Huns got in on it. Then the Slavs came in and Samo's empire. Great and we go without that invasion again. Hungarian kingdom years. Czechoslovakia established in 1918. 
World War II, they were kind of a Nazi puppet state. They're not too proud of it. Slovak uprising. Communism years. Velvet Revolution. They peacefully split off from Czechia. And they joined the EU. That's basically it. And now here's the part of the episode where we mention some of the top notable people from Slovakia. There's so many of them. I'm just going to kind of put on a photo montage so you can kind of just uh, maybe take a screenshot. I know that soccer football of player. And of course, you PP Peter deserve a spot on this section. Let's be real. And with that, let's move on to the final segment. The... All right, Slovakia and friends. Now, when you're a country that's kind of been subjugated by multiple empires and people groups and been exposed to many different ethnicities, you kind of, you know, build up your repertoire and entourage over the years, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of how Slovakia is. For one, Austria and Hungary are like the, hey, hey, oh, don't worry about those empire years you subjugated us under for centuries. We're cool. We're, I mean, we're still keeping our eyes on you, but uh, we're cool these days. But not for real. Today, much of their business goes through these two countries and they get along just fine. Now, for Albania and Romania, they were the only two war Warsaw Pact members that did not participate in the 1968 invasion of Czechoslovakia, which the incident even led Albania to withdrawing from the pact. So there's always that kind of a uh, thank you for not being a douche towards us attitude when it comes to Albania and Romania. Interestingly enough, Little Liechtenstein had a long-standing dispute over some land that they claim belongs to them in Slovakia. This dispute lasted until 2009 when they finally arranged diplomatic relations. However, some people might still bring up the dispute. Ukraine, Croatia, Serbia, and Poland are the Slav cousins they like to see from time to time and share hard conversations with. Many Slovaks like to visit Croatia for vacation and likewise many people from all of the other countries like to visit the Slovak mountains. For Ukraine, Slovakia is like their gateway to the EU and many come over not just to visit but study in their universities. Finland kind of sees Slovakia as a good luck charm as they won the ice hockey world championship twice when it was hosted in Slovakia in 2019 and 2011. India, South Korea, Japan, Armenia, Mexico, and the USA are some of the countries outside of Europe that have all had high profile visits either by heads of state or foreign ministers, and each country has expressed interest in expanding relationships. When it comes to their best friends, however, it's not even a best friend. It's almost a conjoined twin, Czechia, or the Czech Republic. These two are as close as two countries can possibly be. They basically speak the same language, they have shared almost every moment of history together, and they just get each other the best. The only difference is that Czechia tends to be more liberal, Slovakia more conservative, Czechia less religious, Slovakia more religious, Czechia drinks more beer, Slovakia drinks more spirits, but otherwise, they are practically joined <laughs> <laughs> In conclusion, Peter, I think you should take this one. What would you say? Slovakia is like Czechia's little sibling everyone keeps forgetting about or mistaking it for its twin Slovenia. It may not be big in size, but it's huge in natural wonders, quirky places slash traditions, and very passionate and generous people. Perhaps the most common connotation with Slovaks I've heard from foreigners is that we're crazy, but in a good way. So remember, crazy but in a good way. Awesome, Peter. Love that. You rock. Thank you for being in this episode. Check his YouTube channel out. Stay tuned, Slovenia. Yeah, I did, I did, I did make that, uh, that mistake, Slovenia and Slovakia. I did. I did, I, I, I thought this person wanted me to look at uh, Slovenia, but it was Slovakia. So here you go, bro. Us, us, these, us damn foreigners always making the same bloody mistake about your, your, your country, your dig, your countries. But anyway, man, thank you all for listening. As, as, as usual, sometimes I don't say it, but always know that I'm putting the link uh, in the description for the video so you can go check out without me interrupting all the time and ting and ting and ting. You know what I mean? And uh, hey, keep watching. Click there. Go to the playlist. I have several playlists there you can go check out. Click up there. Go check out the next video. All right, the thing, you know what I mean? Uh, let's learn about each other. In the meantime, take care of each other. Cool runnings.